So the SCI doesn't worry so much about the analysis and the design and the verification. We worry about the details and more than anything else, I worry about the restraints. If you don't put the right restraints in or you put them in the wrong places, uh, then you are in serious danger of a collapse. I think that leads to most of the collapses. So a few years ago, quite a few buildings fell down in Scotland. I sit on the BSI committee that is concerned with the structures and a different one concerned with the loading. And uh, some people said that the loading was excessive. Absolutely not. The loading was within the normal design requirements for snow loads. So people should have designed for it. And yet lots of buildings collapsed under this snow load. So here's a headline. Here's another headline. So lots of them occurred. You can see this is back in 2010. Uh, there was no requirement to change the snow loading. The snow loading was perfectly uh, perfectly fine. So here's another headline, again, about the situation in Scotland. And here's a picture. Uh, the snow has melted, but you can see that somebody's portal frame has uh, fallen down to the ground. Why did this portal frame fall down to the ground? Well, there it is. Uh, we've got the problem which I've been harping on about. We've got no restraint to point A. And point A are simply buckled out of the way. Here is a close up. Okay, so there is nowhere which experiences more compression than where the bottom flange of the haunch meets the inside flange of the column. I'm afraid somebody didn't do this right. There was no restraint there. And uh, like all things under compression, it's simply buckled out of the way. And that's why I wouldn't buy that sort of building. Now, a little time ago, there was some suggestion that um, this represented best practice. Uh, and I'm not sure that it does represent best practice for a number of reasons. And if I've done my job, you should be able to identify those reasons. If I was uh, physically in front of you, I would ask you about it. But look, over on the far rafter, there is no restraint at all. So how can that be if the other rafters need restraint? Uh, wh where, where is it on the far rafter? Um, maybe point A is restrained, look, because there are a, a number of connections and some sort of purple colored member going all the way from one end to the other. Let's hope that it's intersects with the outside flange at some point. So, so maybe that's all right. Um, but then I worry about the restraints as we approach the column as well because remember the bending moment diagram is increasing rapidly there but we have a restraint but where the bending moment is even more apparently we don't have a restraint so that's one issue and the second issue is that the restraint which is shown is restraining the inside flange of the, the bottom flange of the rafter it should be restraining the flange where the compression is which is the bottom of the haunch. So I'm afraid to say I don't see these details as representing good practice. And I definitely worry about that one, a portal frame with no restraints at all. Uh, what I will do, ladies and gentlemen, I will finish here and look at the final question. So this is kind of what you should see, but I also have a little bit of an issue about this one as well, because it looks to me like every other purlin has got these inner flange restraints. And I, I'm not sure about that. It could be that every other purlin needs one, but I'm just not sure. Has somebody provided these restraints because they think they're necessary and without any verification, they've just said, well, every other purlin, I'll provide one? Or is it being more thoughtful, thoughtful than that? I really don't know. But when I see them regularly spaced like that, I'm not so sure because you remember my earlier uh, slides, these things need to be positioned where you need them and they need to be positioned judiciously.